What's up guys, it's Tom Ferris Engineering and today we're going to be going over the installation of your intake duct for your Toyota Supra. So let's get into it. All right, so carbon intake that we're installing on the car. Uh, primary goal here is to reduce intake air temperature. And we're gonna do that by basically taking air from the highest pressure point on the car, right up front on the bumper uh, with this guy. And also we should be able to pressurize the air intake box. Um, but the big goal here is to reduce intake air temperature. Um, if I'm being honest, it looks pretty cool too. So. Maybe that's all you want it for. All right, components you're gonna receive in the intake duct kit. Of course, you're gonna have the carbon intake unit itself. Very nice piece. Look at that, shiny. You're gonna have the <clears throat> inlet uh, beauty plate uh, slash cover for the front bumper cover itself. We're gonna have the silicone coupler to connect all of this to the factory intake as well as, you know we love them, a template to cut out the bumper. This one is of course already cut out. All right, tools we need to install the carbon intake duct. Tape, scissors, so that you can cut out and tape the template to the bumper. Uh, something to cut the bumper. I'm using an air saw. You can use an air saw or you can use a cutoff wheel, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Uh, T25 Torx, T30 Torx, uh, I have T-handles here, you can use sockets if you'd like. A five millimeter Allen, four millimeter Allen, 10 mil or eight millimeter socket, 10 millimeter socket, 10 millimeter wrench, panel removal tool, uh, clip removal tool, flat tip screwdriver. Um, I do recommend something like this as it's getting the clips off. Uh, the headlight cover thing uh, is a little bit difficult with just a flat tip screwdriver. So anything kind of like that's horseshoe shaped like this is probably gonna be the biggest benefit. All right, jumping right into it. Uh, jack the car up, support it safely uh, with jack stands, whatever. Um, then you wanna remove the front wheels uh, if you'd like. Uh, we need to get the fender liner bolts off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Basically you got three, I believe it's three eight millimeter head bolts on each fender liner side or wheel well side. And then we've got some 10 millimeter bolts hidden under the weather strip here that you're just, you don't have to peel it off, but just so that you guys can see. Uh, well, you can't see it anyways. We have some 10 millimeter bolts up here on the top. And of course you've got the two um, over here on either side at the top corner of the bumper. Those are gonna be eight millimeters. All right, so we've got all the bolts uh, removed from the, the top section, if you will. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is gonna go up in the air. And if I remember correctly, there are four uh, eight millimeter head bolts that we need to remove that connect the bumper to the, that forward splash panel. So let's go do that now. All right, so uh, eight millimeter head bolts in question. Uh, we have four of them, uh, but we also have these like corner pieces removed for the splitter. So yours may look a little different. Just kidding, you also need to uh, remove these T30 Torx bolts from the center of the bumper right here. One, two, three. Those go into the pedestrian bar or uh, whatever. So make sure you take those out. All right, now we're back on top of the car. Um, we're getting ready to take the bumper off. If you have a tow hook, make sure you remove the tow hook first, uh, like I did. Um, tape the headlights off a little bit if you want it'll help prevent scratching if uh, you know the bumper gets all out of whack when you're trying to put it on or take it off um, last thing is there are two electrical connectors on either side if you just peel the bumper away kind of like that uh, you'll be able to disconnect uh, both the electrical connectors and then you will need to pop them out of their respective brackets uh, i will show you that after i get this apart that way i can show you guys pretty clearly what's going on but we have the bumper ready to remove. All right, we have our template here, nice and cut out. Um, all the directions you need for the template to attach to the car are gonna be on the template itself. So uh, it says Toyota logo, right there. You can't see that. Anyways, uh, Toyota logo. So we're gonna line the template up. Mm -hmm. 
I would say the trick here is not is kind of just let the paper do its thing. Don't uh, don't try to force it one way or the other. Just make sure it's sitting uh, against the bumper. There you have it. Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove the bumper. Um, so grab a friend. All right, bumper removal. So my strategy kind of is just uh, pull, pull it off a little bit on each side and then I like to make sure the bumper drops below the headlights before anything. That way I know I'm not going to scratch the headlights. And there you go. Bumper's off. Alright so I've got the bumper on our little makeshift stand here. Um, template is attached to the bumper like we did earlier. Uh, what I'm going to do basically is drill uh, four three quarter inch holes um, at each corner so that we have a nice radius for the cut. Um, and I'm also, <clears throat> I am going to kind of with a paint marker, trace the outline of the template. So we're just gonna do it like that. Um, then I'm gonna go grab my punch, which I just remembered I didn't bring over here with me, so I'll be right back. All right, I'm back, I got my center punch. All right. So, take our center punch on our marks. I'm just winging it over here, guys. All right, we have the four holes center punch, now I'm gonna drill a small pilot. Uh, I will say though, if if this cutout isn't as perfect as you want it, it's, uh, just make sure you're within the boundaries of the cutout. There is a good amount of wiggle room here, and that's because we do want this to ultimately line up with the duct in the car. So um, if it doesn't look super pretty, uh, as long as it's within this boundary mostly, uh, you know it'll be covered by that uh, carbon inlet plate beauty plate, whatever you want to call it. So I've got the four pilot holes drilled. Now I'm going to carefully peel this back because I don't want to rip this just yet. But we do have this kind of painted outline here, so I do know how to get it directly back in the right spot. Now you can use tape if you want to. I'm going to use marker, but typically I like to mark where to stop on my unibit, just so I don't screw things up too much. And then just start drilling. Uh, so flip the template back over, make sure, get it lined back up, roughly where it was. Now, you can use a cutoff wheel for this portion if you like. Uh, obviously, we're just gonna connect the dots, right? We're gonna go from here to here, uh, and here to here, here to here, here to here, whatever. Uh, these portions with a cutoff wheel might be a little difficult. Go slow, take your time. Um, you know, you got a three inch wheel. Obviously, uh, the center point is gonna be, you know, cut out before the edges, and so you'll need to kind of figure that out. I am gonna use a body saw. Uh, this is a snap-on, but you can get one from Harbor Freight if you need to. All right, so um, I definitely didn't delete the clip of me cutting this out on accident for sure, 100%. Anyways, I cut this out with a body saw. Uh, you can use a cutoff wheel if you like, but that's up to you. Um, anyways, this is out. All I did was clean up the edges so I didn't have any like little boogers or anything like that. Grab your uh, duct beauty piece, beauty plate, inlet piece, whatever you want to call it. Set it over and just make sure you got room to move, just a little bit. Either way, all directions. Uh, make sure it sits on there nicely. Once you've confirmed that, we're gonna go back to the car and we're gonna start installing the actual duct and the coupler that'll connect to the car. And we're back at the car. Um, all right, so we wanna remove the passenger side taillight and uh, the passenger side taillight only. We do need to remove this cover which we probably could have done uh, at the beginning, but uh, yeah, so we're gonna do it now. Yeah, 
these are the two clips uh, in the rear. So once you've got the clips off, you can take this cover off, set it aside, and now you have your headlight exposed. So that's great. But next we're gonna remove this, which I've done with the power of editing and video magic. Uh, four T30 screws, two are gonna look like this, and two are gonna look like this, two on the top, two on the bottom. Then we're gonna remove this styrofoam um, crash bar, shock absorber thing, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, it is kind of like claw, it's got these like claws that grip it to the bumper. Uh, don't rip it off, just uh, take your time and disconnect it, set that aside. And now we have the headlight that we need to deal with. Uh, I'm gonna zoom in real quick. And hopefully you can see this, it's a little bit not in the right spot, but what I've done is put an outline, a paint marker outline around the bolt. And uh, basically I know that the headlight's gonna go back in the right spot. So I did that for all of them. The other two bolts are going to be uh, in the wheel well, uh, coming from the back of the car. So I'm gonna cut to that now. All right, here we are in uh, the wheel well for the passenger side. Uh, all eight millimeter bolts. Um, if you're having trouble figuring out uh, where the separation is, there's two bolts at the center of the top portion right here. Um, just look at that and take those two out and then uh, that'll give you an idea of what, where the front starts. All right, wheel liner is out. Um, had one extra bolt hiccup there. But now you can see this guy here and this guy right here. Uh, again, you can see I kind of marked them with an outline just to make sure they go back in the right spot or the same spot, I should say. Um, T30 Torx and in the back is gonna be that little spinny guy. Just make sure uh, on the back side you hold that uh, totally still so they don't move. All right, the two uh, bolts for the headlight are disconnected. Now we unplugged the uh, headlight. Keep in mind it is a double lock connector. So this red tab here needs to get pushed back or in this direction. Uh, and then you can release the connector uh, like normal. Then you just unplug it and then we're gonna pull the uh, entire headlight out. So we're gonna go back up top and then we'll start the rest of the installation. All right, so off camera, uh, or just before I set the camera up, uh, remove the headlight. <clears throat> so the headlight's out of here now. Uh, next thing you wanna do is grab the silicone coupler and you see this little square kind of trumpet looking thing. We're gonna take the big side and we wanna slip this over the trumpet. Because we're going over the, the uh, trumpet uh, and there is this bracket here, you do wanna kind of like get your hand under there and make sure it's not kind of folding over on itself. Um, but that feels like we've got it in there. And uh, keep in mind, this is meant to crush uh, a little bit and kind of just fill this entire void. Um, I'll show you a little bit more about that when we get the headlight back in. Next, we're gonna take our carbon intake duct um, and then we're gonna basically fit it into this boot uh, like this, hopefully. Now you'll notice uh, these two ears and the holes will line up with uh, these two U-nuts from the factory that held this guy in. Uh, and a quick note about this, um, we are going to need to trim this. Uh, so what you need to do is make sure it looks kind of like this. Leave it up there for a second. Just like that. Basically there's two ribs right here um, that normally fill this out and um, we're gonna have to cut those flush and make sure this bottom portion here is totally flush uh, or flat. That way we can still bolt up these two locations as well as the top two locations just like that. So this is gonna go over the carbon duct like so. 
All right, so due to the nature of these particular carbon parts, uh, they are hand uh, made, so uh, some tolerances might be a little bit off. Uh, I already test fitted the bumper with this duct on it, and I've determined that this duct does need to uh, kind of move up just a hair uh, so that the outer plate that we cut uh, the hole in the bumper for earlier uh, can actually sit uh, totally flush against the bumper. Um, that being said, you may need to modify just a hair. I mean, I'm talking about like an eighth of an inch uh, out of this uh, carbon um, ear on both sides. That way this duct can kind of move up just a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and modify that real quick and then I'm gonna come back and we will finish installing the duct. All right, so uh, I slotted out these ears uh, just a little bit because I know, I, like I said earlier, I know that this needs to sit up just a little bit more than what it was. Um, and like I talked about earlier, this piece has been clearanced as well. Um, if you can't really gather what needs to be done from me holding this up to the camera, basically all you're looking for is making sure that this thing fits, um, you know, without any kind of like forceful action um, and it clears the intake duct. So that being said, we've got this lined up. We're gonna take our two lower bolts, which are the coarse thread um, T30 bolts we took out earlier. And we're gonna go ahead and install these back in. You'll notice there are two holes uh, in the intake duct uh, right below here. And that's gonna allow you to install this piece back to the car. Now I will say, uh, if you did have to adjust or clearance um, these holes, that obviously means that uh, you will have to take the bumper on and off uh, once or twice, hopefully, um, just to make sure that you have the right fit. But basically I know that this needs to come up a little bit, so I'm gonna hold this thing up and go ahead and tighten this thing down. You want to torque these to about five foot pounds. The bottom ones just go into the plastic duct, so just uh, maybe like a quarter of a turn past snug. All right, so the last thing we need to do for uh, the intake duct, uh, as far as uh, installing it before the bumper goes on, is uh, installing these rubber grommets that are included in the hardware kit. And these are basically gonna seal the intake here. Apologize for my fat head in the way. Um, take your time with these, it's probably gonna, a little difficult, but ultimately worth it. You wanna make sure that, you know, all of the air is going into the intake, and not being bled out through these little tiny holes. All right, so you wanna grab your headlight and set it back on top of this, whatever shelf thing that uh, you wanna call it for the headlight itself and start the rear bolt, the rear upper bolt um, into the threads. Um, almost bottomed out, but you wanna be able to still move the headlight around. You'll notice the first thing is that the coupler will actually make contact with the headlight on this, uh, I mean, it's kind of like a strengthening rib, if you will. Um, if you're brave enough and wanna cut and clear into the headlight, that's up to you. We're not saying do that. Right now, what we're saying to do though, is to basically grab the headlight and push it until you can smash the coupler into agreeing with the installation. So I'm gonna go grab a friend who has a lot of muscles like Eric and uh, install this real quick. But basically I'm showing you right now, uh, you wanna just push this into place, make sure all your stuff lines up and then, you know, drop a bolt, oh God, into that hole. So I'm gonna do that real quick off camera. And then when we come back, we'll go over reassembly of the bumper and some fitment notes on the inlet plate. All right, so we've got a better angle here. So as I was saying earlier, this hole is kind of a base uh, measurement uh, or starting point, I should say, for uh, the cutout. Now, when I put this, uh, I've got two different inlets here. When I put this guy on, uh, hopefully you can see it. 
Um, you can see there's a pretty decent gap right here. Uh, and then it kind of closes up on this side. But basically, uh, what, we're, what we're seeing is that these are essentially handcrafted components. And in some cases, the radius uh, here, uh, or all along this edge here, uh, basically might be larger on some pieces than others. And in some cases, um, this may need to move, you know, might actually just need to move up based on where your intake duct is sitting in the car, which we just did earlier. Uh, so you have a number of things that need to be sorted here in order to get this to uh, fit correctly per se. But basically what's happening is this is sitting on that radius on the inside of uh, this um, beauty plate piece. And because of that, what you might need to do is widen this hole or clearance it maybe in one specific spot or, or the whole thing. Um, and that will ultimately get you to fit uh, what you need. And so you can see this is the one we were using earlier. Um, there is virt virtually no gap, but basically once we go to uh, attach our pre-cut VHB uh, double-sided tape, that's gonna eat up all of that gap. And then we will have the installation uh, be nice and clean and flush with or close to flush with the bumper. All right, so before we go ahead and uh, install the inlet duct onto the bumper, um, one more step we want to do is install the foam tape that's supplied it, supplied in the hardware kit. Uh, and you want to just in, basically lay it on the edge of the inlet duct like I'm doing here. Make sure you prep this surface with a 50-50 mix of isopropyl alcohol and water. All right, so you'll be left with a little tail here because we provide a little bit of extra. Just go ahead and cut that off and make sure that it's uh, even with your starting point and then we're good to go. All right, so with all of that covered, um, we've got our uh, what do you call it here? Beauty plate intake cover. I have called 800 things this install. This piece, um, we want to prep the inner flange surface here uh, all the way around. 50-50 uh, mix of isopropyl alcohol and water. Wipe it down. Make sure uh, when, you know, it's there's no dirt coming off anymore. Uh, then you know we have a clean surface. And then you want to do the perimeter of this hole probably about a half an inch out from the actual cut. Um, and prep that surface as well, which I've already done this and applied uh, my version of the double-sided tape. The production kits will have a nice, perfectly cut uh, single piece of uh, 3M VHB tape that will have a nice little convenient pull tab for you to pull the backing off of. So now I'm going to just basically use some rubbing alcohol Again, 50-50 mix isopropyl alcohol and water and prep about a half inch out from the cut. Grab this guy. I'm going to peel three of them off. And this is what I would recommend as well, even when you get the new tape, is to peel most of it off, but not all of it. Uh, that way you can kind of still maneuver it when you place it on the car. Line it up. Looks good and level. And then we're going to apply a good amount of pressure. Basically just lean on it like I'm doing now, kind of even pressure across the whole thing. I want to get it to stick and adhere to the bumper. Do this for about 30 seconds to a minute, probably closer to a minute than 30 seconds. And uh, clay will pop up the real guidelines over here. All right, for the sake of the video, we're gonna say that that's done. 
But again, make sure you follow those guidelines to the T in order to get uh, maximum adhesion and so that this doesn't fall off down the road. All right, so once you have this uh, adhered to the bumper, make sure you uh, again follow those directions. Uh, but once that's done, reassemble the vehicle in the reverse order that we removed everything. And that's going to wrap it up for the install. So as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, be sure to email us at sales at veris-engineering.com. And we'll see you later.